what we were looking at is how cofactors regulate gene expression. And we found out that certain cofactors repress gene expression, so they don't regulate gene expression. What we wanted to find out is what was happening in a live organism, in a mouse or in a worm. And so we started reducing the expression, knocking out the expression of uh, this uh, co-repressor. But instead of gene expression going up all over the place, many, many genes, we found that selective pathways were induced when we knocked out this co-repressor in the muscle. And the nice thing was that we saw that these mice actually, when we did it in mice, got better muscle, they got more muscle, and they became really marathon athletes. So when we made them run, they run about 60% more than a normal mouse. Then we also uh, looked what it did in the worm. So these worms had better mitochondria. Mitochondria are the energy producers of the cell. And so both the mice and the worms where this co-repressor was gone had better mitochondria so they could make more energy providing that to the muscle and that made it for a better muscle, better athletes. Together with a group in uh, the University of California in San Diego, we also looked what would be the consequences of knocking out this co-repressor in fat tissue. And as we would have predicted, these mice became fat because you get off the brakes and so that means no, your fat tissue can grow better and the mice in fact became fat. But what was very interesting in that study was that despite the fact that these mice get fat, they were more uh, insulin sensitive, so they dealt with glucose better. They were protected against diabetes, yet they were very obese. One important application could be, it could help to reduce weight gain, curb weight gain, could help to improve glucose metabolism like uh, as anti-diabetes, but the more evident application would be for people with weakness of the muscle. And this is often the case in elderly people, you have this, what's called frailty, the good thing would be to do this with drugs and try to develop treatments. And that's actually one of the big projects which we're having ongoing now in the lab, trying to modify, reproduce what we see with genetics, with pharmacology tools, or with nutrition. Yeah.